the 1920s, architects turned to dining bars uh, to find out how to lay out a kitchen in a spacey, in a effective manner. So my townhouse at State College has what's called a Pullman kitchen. It's about eight feet wide, it's about 12 feet long, and I have a dishwasher, I have a twin sink, I have a microwave oven, I have two oven burners for a stove, I have a refrigerator, and I have virtually no counter space at all. It's all appliances that I can use and reach from one place that to cook. I, I had the good fortune of bumping into one of Fred Harvey's uh, sons uh, who lived in uh, New Hampshire at the time. It was a funny story because these men worked in a kitchen that was eight feet wide by 16 feet long. And then it was a pantry that was eight feet wide by 12 feet long where the waiters took care of salads, drinks, and, and bread, you know, table set up. And, uh, and, and he said to this day his wife won't go in the kitchen when he's there because he says you immediately look at the peripheral vision. You see somebody getting too close to you, you poke them in the chest with your elbow. He said he did that to his wife twice, and now for some reason she's not in the kitchen anymore. But that's kitchen design. Uh, I don't know, does anybody have questions? Um, this whole thing led to a second cookbook, which had nowhere near the legs of Dining by Rail, and that was uh, because I, to promote Dining by Rail, I started writing a monthly column in a National Rail Fan Pack magazine called On the Menu, and it was about aspects of rail dining today. Uh, I thought, oh, I'll do that a couple of years, and that'll help the sales of the book, and I'm still writing that column 21 years later. And I just did one on, uh, the, the, uh, has anybody in here been on the Rocky Mountaineer? That's a private luxury train that runs in Canada. It's a day train, um, and they just released a cookbook of, uh, because it's a very high-end cuisine on their old, like, what's called old leaf service. But uh, I reviewed, I commented on that book, and then another little uh, book that had a description of one of the things that I find about my train is, you know, after you've been on a train a, a few hours, or especially for me at night, if you look out the window, you can't tell which way you're going. So which way is this train moving? And uh, there's a story in there about a dining car waiter and a woman couldn't tell which way the train was moving. He was trying to explain to her that when you go around the curve, if you see an observation car behind us, we're going that way, and you see, you know, that sort of thing. But, but anyway, uh, the second book dealt with real dining today. As we were saying at the table, most of you may not know that Amtrak actually employs 300 food service protection, uh, professionals. Now, they do call them chefs, and they aren't necessarily Culinary Institute of America graduates, although their executive chefs are the guys that design the menus. Um, and so that's one, working railroads. Via uh, Rail Canada is the same way. Uh, there are about 90 dinner trains that operate in North America. Most of you, if you're familiar with any of them, would be the Napa Valley Wine Train. Uh, not all the other 89 are as good as that one. That's a year-round restaurant set on a moving train. There is one in Newport, Rhode Island. It's high quality. Uh, Newport Dinner Train, the one up in New Hampshire. Um, the, the, the freight railroads have uh, business car fleets. Most of those people are CIA graduates or international sales graduates. Uh, we do have, we don't have many right now, but we did that. Did anybody in here ever ride the American Orient Express? Okay. Uh, just the regular Orient Express in Europe, the regular Orient Express. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> but, uh, but we did have a private luxury train from any country in the mid 90s to the mid 2000s. Um, also, oh, the private cars. Now, again, there's private cars on exhibit down at Grand Central Terminal this weekend, because today was National Train Day. Those cars will still be there tomorrow. There are 17 of them. They are toys of very wealthy men, mostly, <coughs> um, that typically it's between one and two million dollars to restore a rail car that you can haul on an Amtrak train. Um, and a uh, caller called me today to say, gee, it's a three hour line to get in. I don't know if it'll be as bad tomorrow, but it might be. Uh, but, but those people all employ uh, CIA graduate chefs, top end chefs. Because they either travel on those cars themselves or they <coughs> charter them to people. And uh, that's how I've had the good fortune to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger, Meryl Street, Michael Jackson. Um, Schwarzenegger and Street don't like to fly. Um, Michael Jackson used it because he could get away from the paparazzi. With, when he took it, when he traveled with his kids, so he chartered a couple of private cars, and uh, once they left the train station, nobody could figure out where they were. Hmm. So uh, th that's another group that has these these high-end chefs. So I think that's it. Private luxury trains, uh, Amtrak, uh, or, or the working railroads, dinner trains, the, the working railroads. Yes. All right. Uh, I'll add one more. 
uh, a lot of railroads operate ferry boats in the San Francisco. Yeah. And the key system had its own recipes for it, for its travels on the ferry boat going back and forth. Okay, yeah, yeah. And that's another one. Yeah, and that's I think right. the Southern Pacific also did too. Yeah, that's one I, I made no mention of in my book, but you're right. I mean, there's a, since there was a biography published of a guy, an African-American fellow, uh, that, that, uh, that worked on ferry boats before they were in the dining hall. So. And the same thing, small kitchen, lots of people to feed. And, that's what and a very short time to feed them in. <laughs> a very short time to feed them in. So, any questions, have any questions, comments? I'm going to be out there. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. Now, for some reason, I brought one of these for everybody and left them out there. I think I left them out there on a the table and they all disappeared. So, I did give everybody and should have gotten one of these. Uh, however, with the bibliography, I made 35 copies of. It's gone too. So, this is a bunch of these. Uh, these are various railroad cookbooks that are available. Uh, some of them are in print. I have those in boldface. Um, and then there's everything in here from uh, other books, Collectible China. Now, I, I mean, first of all, you have some Virginian China uh, out there. I'm guessing that might have been from the business cars, but maybe it was used uh, on those lounge observation cars. I have my favorite pattern, that's the Wing Streamliner, which is a Union Pacific uh, China pattern for their city off trains. Um, but most railroads had various China patterns that were distinctive. Their, their top of the line train had one pattern, and then their second tier trains had another pattern. Their third tier trains may have just had generic China. But that's one of the reasons why the railroad designed such elaborate menus, was to try to prevent people from stealing the China. Uh, because that's what, you know, people want a souvenir, so they, uh, the, the dining car superintendent of the, the Union Pacific told me at one time, he caught a woman, she had put this silver Kramer in her purse, Kramer and all, but that wasn't even empty, she just ate the But they were hoping that people would take the menus or the pencils with the railroad name on as kind of the mementos of the trip rather than stealing the china. But, uh, well, pay, pay it in by the thing with the stone glass, I don't really push. <laughs> The, uh, I do have uh, the uh, record of China that's available. I mean, this stuff is so pricey now that, uh, that there are uh, historical societies that raise money by doing replicas of, of specific railroad Chinas that you can buy uh, if you were interested in something like that. Well, thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the meeting.